Mechanic, Resurrection 2016. In this follow-up, Arthur Bishop, played by Jason Statham, has staged his own death and assumed the identity of Mr. Santos, living a quiet life in Rio de Janeiro. One day, during a seemingly ordinary lunch, a mysterious woman, portrayed by Yaya Ying Rathafongam, approaches him. She reveals that her employer wants Bishop to abandon his retirement and carry out three targeted assassinations, making them appear as accidents. Accompanied by a group of assassins, the woman attempts to force Bishop into compliance. Acting swiftly, Bishop captures an image of her on his phone just as she reaches for a weapon. He strategically uses the table as a barrier and engages in a confrontation with the other assailants before making a daring escape onto a tram car. The woman pursues him, but Bishop eludes her by leaping onto the back of a hang glider. Seeking refuge, Bishop retreats to a hideout in Thailand with the assistance of his friend May, played by Michelle Yeoh. May delves into an investigation, discovering that the mysterious woman's employer is Raya Crane, portrayed by Sam Hazeldean, a childhood friend of Bishop. On the shores of a picturesque location, Bishop encounters Gina, played by Jessica Alba. Later, in the evening on the waterfront, Bishop hears sounds of a struggle on a boat, rushes to intervene, and eliminates the assailant. Bringing Gina safely ashore, Bishop learns that she is being targeted by Crane due to her refusal to comply with his demands. As Bishop watches a video showcasing Gina's altruistic efforts teaching children in Cambodia, she discloses that Crane kidnapped a friend of hers, using the threat of harm to children as leverage. Bishop safeguards Gina, forging a connection as they frequent a bar where May works, unaware that Crane's operatives are monitoring their every move. Eventually, Crane's men corner Bishop and Gina on the beach. While Bishop fights the him in, Gina is taken. Bishop is brought in to meet with Crane after a long absence. Crane has an axe to grind with Bishop after he felt that Bishop abandoned him when Crane needed him. Crane orders Bishop to kill the three targets, or else Gina will die. Bishop reluctantly agrees. The first target is a warlord named Krill, Femi Elifowoju Jr., who is being kept locked up in a Malaysian prison. Bishop travels to Malaysia and gets himself arrested in order to get in the same building as Krill. While on the inside, Bishop stops a man who was already planning on killing Krill. Later, Bishop meets with Krill inside his little hut by the prison yard. As Krill discusses his plan to rule Africa once he gets out of prison, Bishop sneaks up on him and chokes him with a wooden rod by pressing it against a bar on the window. He sets up the accident by having Krill sit at his table to appear as though he was in the middle of a prayer. The guards are alerted to the incident and witness Bishop on the security cameras. Bishop creates a bomb that blows a hole through the prison walls. He walks through and jumps into the ocean to escape. Bishop is contacted by Crane through his tablet to speak with Gina. She tells him that he only has 36 hours to kill the next target or she will be eliminated. Crane tells Bishop that the next target is a man named Adrian Cook, Toby Eddington, who runs an underage trafficking ring. Bishop finds Cook's apartment and carefully sets up his trap. Cook goes for a swim in his glass pool outside his apartment while Bishop is hooked to a wire as he scales the building. He uses a device to break the glass in the pool, causing the water to spill out with Cook plummeting to his death. Once again, Bishop makes a clean getaway. Somehow, time has run out for Bishop, and he is forced to kill the last target immediately. The man is Max Adams, Tommy Lee Jones, a billionaire who owns a bunch of submarines. Adams finds Bishop waiting for him in his safe room, but instead of killing him, the two of them get along and decide to work together. Bishop has Adams fake his death by blowing up his equipment and telling Crane that the job is done. They arrange a meeting so Crane can give Gina back. However, Crane is planning to have Bishop killed. Bishop waits for Crane's men as they get off land and head to kill him. He shoots them all dead before heading toward Crane's boat. He shoots, stabs, and blows up more hitmen before getting to Crane. He finds Gina, and they discover that Crane has the boat rigged to explode. Bishop puts her in a chamber to let her escape while he finishes Crane. The two of them go head-to-head -head and fight as time is running out. Crane pulls Bishop down with the anchor chain, but Bishop manages to pull it off and tie Crane down with the chains. Bishop runs away moments before the boat explodes, killing Crane. Gina resurfaces in the chamber and sees the wrecked boat. She is rescued and treated by paramedics, and she learns there were no survivors. Gina returns to Cambodia to continue teaching. 
She writes a letter to May to let her know she is safe and doing what she loves. Gina is then surprised when Bishop shows up. They embrace. The last scene shows Adams reviewing security footage. He sees that Bishop found a chamber to sneak into before the boat exploded. He got out once that piece of the boat was recovered. Adams laughs and deletes the evidence. Since faking his own death, Arthur Bishop has been living quietly in Rio de Janeiro under the name Santos. He is approached by a courier, Rene Tran, who knows his true identity and explains that her employer wishes Bishop to kill three targets and stage their deaths as accidents. Bishop escapes, eluding her and her mercenaries and fleeing to Thailand. He takes shelter at the resort island beach house of his friend, May, and learns that Tran is working for Raya Crane. Some time later, a bruised woman, Gina Thornton, approaches May for first aid before returning to a boat anchored nearby. May sees her being beaten by a man aboard the boat and alerts Bishop. Together, they rescue Thornton, but in the scuffle, the man's head hits a bollard and he dies. Bishop searches, unsuccessfully, for evidence of the man's identity, then sets the boat ablaze. While May tends to Thornton's injuries, Bishop finds that Thornton is also connected to Crane, and concludes that he anticipated Bishop would become romantically involved with her. He would then kidnap her to make Bishop take the assassination jobs. On being confronted with his theory, Thornton reveals that Crane had threatened the children's shelter in Cambodia that she runs unless she participated. Over the next few days, Bishop gets to know Thornton better, and they fall in love. As expected, Crane's mercenaries arrive and abduct them. Crane keeps Thornton hostage to ensure Bishop completes the assassinations. The first target is a warlord named Krill, held in a Malaysian prison. Bishop gets himself imprisoned and gains Krill's trust by killing a man who attempts to kill him, Krill's former right-hand man. Bishop then kills Krill himself by overdosing him with snake venom and escapes with the help of Crane's operatives. The next target is Adrian Cook, a Sydney-based billionaire and former trafficker of underage sex workers. Bishop bypasses Cook's penthouse apartment's tight security, breaks the glass bottom of his overhanging pool with a tube containing chemicals, causing the glass to crack and sending him plummeting to his death. While relaying details of the third target, Crane allows Bishop to speak to Thornton, who repositions the camera, enabling Bishop to identify Crane's boat. Bishop attempts a rescue, but Crane is able to thwart it. And